Let's do something new, different, and exciting this time around. We're gonna install the new elementary OS, version 0.4, Loki specifically. We're not gonna try it, we're gonna install it. Now the reason for this is I've been using elementary for, I don't know, two weeks, maybe three weeks. It was, uh, I started using it since I did my Ubuntu versus elementary OS benchmark. I can't remember how long ago that was, but that certainly wasn't my first time using elementary. I have used it off and on for a while now. I was using it very happily back in November of 2015, and I had a hardware failure. And while I was troubleshooting it, I switched over to Ubuntu GNOME and I fixed my hardware issue, but I never switched back to elementary. Uh, but I, when I used it, I really enjoyed it. And I've been looking forward to kind of moving back and that benchmark kind of gave me a reason to do that. So this is the installer for elementary OS 0.4 beta. This is not official stable release, I guess. This is beta, so it's got rough edges and sharp edges and probably is not suited for everyday consumption like I'm going to do. It's using the Ubuntu installer, so this isn't anything special. Of course, it's customized to you know reference uh, elementary stuff, but this is Ubiquity, I think is the name of the installer. We're not gonna read the uh, release notes. I'm sure they're very interesting, but let's move on. Preparing to install elementary, we of course want updates, and we of course want the third-party software for graphics, Wi-Fi, hardware, flash, etc. Your computer currently has OS Freya 0.3.2. Like I said, that's what I've been using. So I, I don't want to waste it and blow all my data away, and I'm certainly not going to install alongside. This might be different than what most people do. I've got two hard drives. This one is solid state, this one is not and this is my home partition, 750 gigs. Whoa, what the hell? What is it doing up there? That's weird. Well, at any rate, it's ext4. I'm going to mount it as my home. I'm not gonna format it because obviously I don't wanna do that. So that way, when the OS is done installing, it'll all my data will be there, all my Steam games will be there, all my all my Dropbox stuff will be there. I won't have to reinstall or re-download anything. It's already there. But we do want to blow these guys away. And I've had trouble with the EFI partition if you just try to write on top of the existing one. Oh, that's weird too, look at that. I wonder if Ubiquity has always done that. I don't know what's causing that. It's like the focus is staying with the mouse cursor. But what I like to do is create a EFI partition at 512 megabytes. So I blow the existing bootloader away, create a new one, and we create a new mount point. Now you'll notice that I don't have swap. I don't use swap, so. And this is it. Pacific time zone is good. English US is good. And I'll go ahead and skip this part. So the install took roughly five minutes, maybe a little bit less. So we'll go ahead and restart and we'll boot into the OS. We've made it to the login screen. First try, didn't run into any weird issues with bootloader or anything else. But I will say that this over here on the right hand side, the date and time, uh, this is clearly off centered. In CSS, in web pages, you have a container sort of object and it creates margins on each side. And it looks like there's a margin here on the left hand side, but that margin is missing or something. I don't know. I don't know how this is arranged, but clearly this is wrong. So we'll go ahead and log in. And here we are. So if you were to install and log into elementary for the first time, you, you would not see this background. This is because since I reused my home partition, it just picked up right where my last partition left off. So we've got updates already. This must be the new app center, interesting. I was told I have updates, but uh, okay. So when you have updates, it should probably take you to installed instead of categories, but this is the app center, I think. App Center version 0.1. So this is pretty cool. I was following the elementary launch pad 
and there was discussions on whether or not they were going to use the application software center from Lubuntu or if they're going to write their own. And I actually don't know what they ended up doing. Um, it looks like this was written by the elementary team. So this is custom for elementary. Uh, if I'm wrong, you can comment me or you can correct me in the comments. I would love to know. Uh, but this is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and update these guys. So we'll minimize that. And let's get some software going. Now, I don't like using software centers. I think they're really cool for people who aren't technically capable of, of handling themselves in a terminal and stuff. But I'm going to install Synaptic because that's how I like to install software. And now that Synaptic is installed, let's go ahead and launch it and kind of pick up where I left off in my last OS install. So I don't know what's going on here, but let's go ahead and grab Steam. Uh-oh, it's missing. So weird little artifact I just discovered. I can install Steam from here. Oh wait, let me close that. Okay, so you don't see Steam here, right? So let me close him but now I can get Steam. I don't know why that's happening. I'm sure that there's a valid reason, whether it be a bug or not a bug, but that is kind of strange. So I noticed now randomly it's telling me I have even more updates. I guess it somehow didn't finish the updates from before, which is kind of weird. Or do I have to click them one by mo one? Please tell me I don't have to do that. Really? There's no feedback telling me that it's updating, which is weird. Yeah, look, there's also it's also like missing a margin when this pops out, which is kind of weird. But anyway, yeah, I'm not going to use this. I don't know what it's doing. Like I said, I don't use those very much anyways. I'm just going to go to Synaptic. And I, I noticed that it's also missing the filter, which is kind of a pain. I can't remember how to put that back. I have to look it up, and I'm not going to do it right now. So one thing I'm really excited about is Mesa. Now we have the more recent Mesa drivers and you'll notice that if you follow my channel at all that I also have uh, some gameplay series that I was doing like Tomb Raider and some other ones. And the main reason why I wanted to upgrade to beta, even though it has you know rough edges and things, with elementary OS Loki, I get the latest Mesa drivers and that's important because I, I do want to f finish up my other series like Shadow of Mordor and Tomb Raider and stuff but elementary OS Freya uses Mesa 10 point something and Ubuntu 16.4 uses Mesa 11, which brings along OpenGL 4, which is required for those games. So now that we've upgraded here, I can actually go back and finish that series. So that's exciting. As you can see, OpenGL core profile 4.1, bam. It's actually 11.2. I thought that it was 11.1 or something. So it's even it's even uh, more recent than I thought. So that's super awesome. Now, another thing I'm pretty excited about is I've been really, really into, for a while now, I've been really into the Vala programming language. And the Vala or Vala programming language is the programming language that the elementary team uses. It's a programming language that's developed by the GNOME people, the GNOME Foundation or whatever. But it's really cool because syntactically it's very similar, and looking, there it is. It's very similar to uh, C Sharp, which is my native uh, languages that I use as a professional software developer. And I'd prefer not to use C Sharp, Mono, or any sort of .NET thing on Linux. And for elementary OS Loki, they included this new package called Elementary SDK. And what that is supposed to do is bring along all of the dependencies required to actually create an elementary app. So I'm actually really excited about that. So there's a couple of final things I want to cover before I end this video out. Uh, first thing is this weird little bug I found by accident. So system settings, go to sound, and then come up here to the little notification, which I was going to talk about anyways, because these notifications are using a different notification framework or library, I think. They used to use Ayatana, which is the Ubuntu indicator framework which did not follow a standard it was i guess it was attempting to implement its own standard and nobody really liked it so i believe that the elementary team moved away from it but anyways so i click this indicator here and then go to sound settings 
and you'll notice that we were all settings over here, this little area, and now it's sound. If I click this, I go back to all settings. I click it again, I go back to the actual settings menu. So it's like it goes down another level, but it doesn't really, not that that matters. So anyways, so this whole configuration thing is new. I don't remember anything quite this sophisticated in Freya. So this is a hugely, hugely welcome improvement for a couple reasons. Mainly, you can go up to the indicator here you can like mute things from the actual indicator. Now this is super useful to me because I'm on and off the Discord community, the EGIO Discord community all the time. Sometimes I'm muted, sometimes I'm not. And I also switch microphones. I have a headset and then I also have a Shure SM57 I do all my recordings with. So sometimes I just want it disabled. And I believe with Freya and with Ubuntu GNOME, if you want to disable your input, you have to go to sound settings, go to input and disable it here, which is kind of annoying. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. And then the last thing that I'm going to show before killing this video off is the new notification center. So it seems like the audio notifications are broken. Whoa, not that broken. What the hell's going on? That was weird. But notice how I'm controlling my volume. I'm controlling it through the keyboard. With elementary Freya, it would actually pop up on the screen showing me that I was, um, you know, increasing or decreasing the volume. Now I'm doing it and there's no notification at all, so I don't know what's up with that. But the other notification thing is I'm running Steam in a terminal, so this is like a job that's running. And then if I close it, you'll see a notification on the top right hand side, like that, see? I had to open another window because when I closed it, it brought focus back to the console, which meant the notification didn't have to show. But see the notification, it kind of slid out and then slid back when it was done, so that's cool. So that is gonna wrap up the Elementary OS 0.4 Loki preview. I have one question for the devs at this point, and that question is when Loki comes out of beta and it becomes full production, ready, stable, and everything, will beta automatically upgrade to the stable version or will I need to reinstall it again? Of course, I would prefer if it just kind of updated to the stable version, but at the same time, I wouldn't really be surprised if it didn't because spins of official distributions oftentimes have trouble with that. But that is it. That will wrap up this video. Thanks a million to the elementary OS team. You guys are freaking awesome. And I look forward to more of your work in the future.